Hello, I'm Pastor David, and this is Activate, a study in God's Word. And I'm honored and happy to have with us today and for the next few days, Sister Theo, who is going to lead us in a teaching on prayer. And uh, Theo, glad that you are helping to lead this teaching this week. And uh, thankful to God for you and, and your ministry here at New Life Church in so many different ways. I thank God for you. Today we're going to be starting talking about the second of five values here at New Life Church. Our first value, of course, is the Word of God, which is kind of foundational for our lives and for our ministry. Today we're talking about prayer, and prayer is uh, who we are and what we do. In other words, that's just, it's got to saturate our culture. We talk here at New Life Church a lot about pray first, and that's really what we're trying to do is trying to build a culture of prayer here at New Life Church where everybody realizes that anything we do, everything we do, we want to have it prayed over, prayed through, and prayed about, and whatever other terms you can use, we want prayer to be an overarching, underlying, uh, foundational part of New Life Church. And that's why we consider prayer as one of our five values. Um, Let me just remind you that uh, if you'll go to our website, newlifema.com, there we have the DRC Discipleship Resource Center, one of the buttons. In fact, if you scroll down the front page, it's so important to us right now and what we're doing that on the front page you'll just find uh, some links to take you to the DRC Discipleship Resource Center. And you'll find notes for this week's teaching and the teachings of the past few weeks. This week's on prayer, once again. Uh, Prayer is the underlying foundation for who we are and what we do. And as we're going forward, beginning some D1 ministry teams here, we want prayer to really saturate those D1 ministry teams and, and for prayer to be a focus and a deep, deep commitment of every D1 ministry team. Well... I'm going to ask you to lead us off in prayer first, pray first, and then after you've led in prayer, uh, I'm going to just hand it over to you and let you start, and I'll follow along with you, and we'll follow through the notes, and uh, let's see where the Holy Spirit leads us today. If you will, open in prayer. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, that you keep growing us day in and out and helping us to grow from glory to glory, as your word says. Father, today as we come to talk about communing with you, I pray in the name of Jesus, O God, that you will speak through us and you will let your word reach the hearts of men and women who will be listening to this, O God. I pray that, Lord God Almighty, only your will will be done. And I ask in the name of Jesus, oh God, that the the yearning and the joy of prayer will become part of our lives, oh God, so that day in and out, our lives will be filled with your presence and your will. We honor you, oh God, and we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love what you said in, in your prayer there. You said it's communion. Really, prayer has to be kind of two active ingredients, communication And communion, when we think of communion, a lot of times in in at least some of our Protestant churches, we think of the the emblems, you know, the the wine and the the bread. Uh, But really here, communion, we're talking about fellowship. And I think in terms of husbands and wives, uh, there has to be communication. But if all we're doing is communicating, then we're not really a husband and wife. We haven't, there has to be communion, fellowship, intimacy, and communication. And so those are the two kind of powerful ingredients uh, of, of our prayer life. So what is it that, uh, what is prayer? Talk to us about that and help lead us through that today. So I think you've talked a little bit more about what prayer is already, um, <laughs> which is cool because uh, when we talk about prayer, it's talking to God, a conversation with God. Um, just like you talk to your friend, just like you talk to the person next to you, it's, it's important that we talk to God every day about 
what we need, about his will, about what's going on in our lives, about how we feel, about everything. So like we say here, pray first. So it has to be something that we do consistently. So prayer is just communion, communion with communion God. Communion and communication. And I, I like that third word that you use, which is uh, three C's, then it <laughs> is uh, um, conversation. conversation. Because prayer is more than just saying things to God. Uh, we're not just uh, uh, chanting magical formulas or saying just specific words. It's conversation. Yeah. Um, and that's what I think sometimes is missed. Uh, for a lot of people, prayer becomes a formula or how to do it. What, But really, it is communication, conversation, uh, and and communion with the with the Father, and and that's the one thing I I, I just uh, that I think is so important because yes, our, the Lord Jesus, the Bible says He is a friend to sinners, so He is our friend, uh, but He is God, and He tells us in His Word that He is Father, and so when I talk about conversation in prayer, I say, how would you talk to your earthly daddy? Uh, th those of us who have had good relationships with our earthly father. I, I can be transparent. I, I can tell him my heartache, my hurts. I can even tell him my anger. But I, I speak respectfully to him. I, I, there's a certain point that I'm not going to go to because he is my dad. Yes. He is our heavenly father. And so we don't have to be formal. There are some people that's, you know, they get lost in the formalities of prayer. Uh, it's just real conversation with the Heavenly Father who loves us and who cares about us. Amen. Amen. I'd like to um, read Jeremiah 33, 3, which um, some friends of mine call it the telephone number of God. Uh -huh. That's good. <laughs> it says, call to me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Praise so God. the Lord is telling us to call to him to speak to him, and then he will answer us. So when we are praying, like you're saying, we, we don't just talk and talk and talk. We also have to listen so that when he answers us, we hear him, and that he will show us great and mighty things that isn't, we don't isn't know. That, isn't that what conversation is? Yes. If all I'm doing is sending you letters and not getting anything in response, there's a one-way communication. And thank God our Heavenly Father... He wants to communicate with us. Yes. He, he wants to converse with us. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, good. Yes. And then um, another thing I, I want us to talk about is the dependence on God when uh, it comes to prayer. Yeah. So when I'm praying, it means that I have a total dependence on who God is and what he has said in, in, his, in his word for my life and what's going to happen. So can you talk to us about Praying and depending on God. Well, I think that's what true humility is. True humility is an acknowledgement that without him, I can't do anything. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I think that's why we walk in humility before God and before men, yeah. uh, before people. Mm -hmm. Because that humility is simply a dependence that says, without you, God, I can't do anything. And yeah. truthfully, you, Theo... We're, de we're dependent on each other. We're brothers and sisters uh, in faith. We're part of the family of God. I need you and you need me and we need him. Amen. And our dependence is on God, our, our, our complete dependence. Our, our life comes from him. And uh, we remember that. Amen, amen. Um, another thing that I want, I want you to emphasize a little bit also is recognizing who Jesus is when we are praying. Jesus and the Father and right. the Holy Spirit. Right. I think uh, God is three in one, as we say, uh, which is the truth. But sometimes some of us find it a little difficult. Am I praying to the Father? Or am I praying to yeah. Jesus? Am I praying to the Holy Spirit? What am I doing? So can you explain that a little bit? Well, I think it's important to realize the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one, all three are equally God. Amen. So when we pray, we are praying to God. Now, there is some debate, and there are people who question, and, and 
you know, will have long teachings on who do you pray to and, and based on Matthew 6, where he says, pray like this, our Father which art in heaven. Amen. And we see our Lord Jesus praying, and he prays and, and speaks to the Father. Um, I think probably most of the time we are addressing the Father. But I also see in the scripture there are places where there are prayers directed to the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. and there are prayers that are directed to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So the point is we pray to God. Uh, I think most often we're directing our, our prayers to the Father because Jesus said he's seated at the right hand of the Father and ever interceding for us. But the important thing is to understand that there is one God. It's not three different gods. Amen. And we're praying, to, you know, uh, we are praying to God uh, with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, and so we are talking today about what prayer is and its importance. And I know you are a man of prayer and you emphasize prayer. And in our church, we say mm -hmm. pray first. Can you talk to us a little bit more about why is prayer important in our lives as believers? Oh, it's important for so many different reasons. Um, prayer for me, uh, the fa Father, God is my lifeline. <laughs> that dependence we talked about. Um, I need him. And it is expressing that total dependence. But prayer is also a time when we, when we yield ourselves to the will of God. That's why our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What? It's the next part. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come, and thy, thy will, will be, be done. done. And so during prayer, one of the important aspects of prayer, and I wouldn't say the total. It is not the total. Uh, it is just one part, but I do think it is a very important part that during prayer I am submitting myself. I submit my family. I submit this church. I submit our nation. We surrender to God, and we ask his authority, his kingdom to be established in our lives Amen. and for his will to be done in us and through us. And so prayer is vitally important. Prayer is important. I have to, during prayer, I ask him to provide for me. Amen. And it's, again, acknowledging dependence on him. Give us this day our daily bread. Uh, help, help me with my attitude. Lord, help me to forgive those who trespass against me and, and, and help me, oh God, forgive my sins. So prayer, again, it's a recognition that he is our life. He is everything to us and we are dependent on him for every good thing. Every good gift comes, comes from, from above. Yeah, amen. amen, amen. So <clears throat> that uh, tells me that if I don't pray, I will not be able to know who God is. I will not be able to know his will for me. And I will not be able to even be part of what he's doing in my life and in the lives of other people, especially when we are at church. We have to pray in order to see his kingdom come and his will done. So um, let's look at our point five here. It says prayer is the God-ordained means by which God's purposes are brought to pass on earth and a means by which God meets our needs. So does that mean that if I don't pray, God will not meet my need? Well, he says you have not because you ask not, Amen. so ask that your joy may be full. Furthermore, again, I just I repeat myself, but Jesus said, pray like this, give us this day our daily bread. Um, furthermore, that entire point there, again, refers back even to the will of God. What is God's will for my life? What are God's purposes? He says in his word to Jeremiah, he says, Before you were conceived in your womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I had a plan for you. Well, if God has a plan for me, I need to talk to him so he can tell me what it is. Amen? Amen. Um, Amen. And, and in prayer, as we seek his face and uh, for me, prayer is partly, uh, part of my prayer time is reading the word of God because it is through his word that he speaks to me and gives me revelation and direction about who he is and what he wants me to do. I want to read Matthew 7, 7 to 11, which is a powerful verse that tells us to pray. Um, so Matthew 7, 7 to 11, it says, ask. 
and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who if his son asks for bread will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a serpent. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to the children, to your children, how much more will your father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you, whatever you want men to do for you, do um, also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Isn't that cool that... God is telling us to ask, and we will receive. Yeah, um, obviously we, we bring to him our needs and our petitions. I think this portion of Scripture, really in some respects, if you read uh, uh, from verse number 1 through verse number 12 that you just ended with, is not only talking about our relationship with the Heavenly Father, but mm -hmm. really it's talking about our relationship with one another mm -hmm. and the way we treat one another. Uh, the way we live every day, I think, affects my relationship with the Father. Mm. If I don't live right, um, he may not. In fact, he says in his word that if I don't forgive others, he's not going to forgive me. Mm. That, that's something we forget or we don't emphasize enough. Amen. But if I don't, and, and here he's talking about treating other people, doing what's right. And so, uh, yeah, it is, it is amazing that we can bring our needs to the Father but I, I think also as we read this particular scripture, it's just a reminder that it's so very important the way we treat each other that God uh, looks at the way we treat each other. And uh, some of our prayers are either, I think one of the sessions this coming week that as you have designed these notes, you're going to talk about things that hinder our mm. prayer life. Yes. And that's really going to be a very important uh, teaching for you to listen to because I believe in that one you'll talk about forgiveness yes. and, and, and uh, uh, not allowing bitterness in because if we do then whatever you ask is not going to be answered it's Amen. not going to be given to you Amen. Uh, so um, yeah really really powerful truths Amen. and um, oh, another point here says that the church is God's house mm -hmm. and we know that we are the church and the Bible says that we, the, church, the house of the Lord is a house of prayer. Can you talk to us a little bit? Well, those are, in some, in some respects, they're two different things. And in some respect, they're, they're, all, they're, they're all very much together. Uh, the scripture tells us uh, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. In fact, uh, as we're recording this, not as you are watching this, but as we are recording this just yesterday... I was preaching from Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 11 to 22. And there, the, there Paul's talking about the difference between the Jews and the Gentiles. And he says, in Christ Jesus, we have been brought into one. Yeah. And he had said one of the differences between the Jew and the Gentile before we come to Christ is that the, the Jew has the, the temple to go to. But now in Christ Jesus, because of the Spirit of God living in us, we are now the, the temples of the Holy Spirit. He dwells within he dwells us. Within. And, and there where he talks about, then he says uh, that the house of God should be known as a house of prayer yeah. for all nations. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there are a couple of different things we could say about that. If we are at the temple of the Holy Spirit, then we need to be a, a, a person of prayer. And then, uh, again, a, a kind of a different angle on it is that here, uh, here at New Life Church, we want to be... Um, a place of prayer where everybody is welcome. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> where we recognize everybody is part of the family of God. Amen. Amen. So Hebrews, um, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. <laughs> Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as it is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as we see the day approaching. So not only are we praying by ourselves, but it's also good to come together as, as believers in Jesus Christ to pray together. It's incredibly important. And when we talk about we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, 
we understand that there are certain individual aspects to it because the Holy Spirit lives in me individually. But most often when the Scripture is talking to us, it's, it's talking to us as a body. We are the body of Christ. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So it's just not individuals. And so that's the power that when we all come together, we come together as individual believers, but we come as the household of faith. An another expression that Paul uses, we come together as the temple of the living God. And as we come together and pray, uh, again, uh, for all, uh, we're a house of prayer for all nations. Everybody is welcome, uh, regardless of, of race or color or nationality. This is a place where everybody can pray. Why? Because we're all part of the family of God. And we together, there's power in the togetherness. That's one of the scary things about, as again, as we record this, we're in the season of the, mm. the so-called pandemic yeah. and, and uh, restrictions where we have to keep isolation or, you know, a certain distance and isolation, such things. Um, when this is over with, my prayer is that the people of God will once again not be dependent uh, or not just sit back and stay at home. We're, we'll keep doing videos. We will keep doing these type of teachings. We'll keep doing prayer. But there is something powerful and important about the people of God coming together and praying together corporately. God does something powerful when we agree together in prayer. If two or three will agree together in my name as touching anything, it shall be done, Amen. says the Lord. Amen. And so as we are um, establishing these D1 teams, that is why it's important that we let prayer become the basis of it. Yeah. Amen. So that when, when we meet together, it's not just about the fellowship. It's not just about uh, getting to see each other and talk about what I, I'm going through. Or It's important that we, we pray. It's important that we pray for each other. It's important that we pray for our church. We pray for our city. And we pray for souls. And so that we'll see the will of God done, be, uh, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, you pray together. There's an anointing I, I've experienced in my life. There's, a, there's an importance for me to pray alone. I, every day I have my morning prayer time seeking the Lord. But there is something powerful that just happens when we begin to pray together and seek the face of God. And these D1 ministry teams praying together, you're going to sense a new anointing, Amen. a new power that's going to flow through you that's going to just push you out in the ministry, out to do the things of the Lord. Amen. So I just want to encourage each one of us as um, New Life Church family, uh, as believers out there, prayer is really important that as we, we, we have to pray by ourselves because that's how we get in communion with God the Father, and we have to also pray with each other and pray for each other so that we will all see God's glory manifested on earth. And another thing I want you to talk to us a little bit about is Jesus being the man of prayer, how he exemplified prayer on his uh, time on earth among us. Well, obviously, uh, number one, we know he prayed. But we also know that his disciples saw him praying, saw the, uh, saw the, the, the communication he had with the Father, but also saw the effect of his prayer life. Yeah. And so in Luke 11, 1, they say, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Uh, Jesus was indeed our model. We see, and, and here in the notes, there are a lot of things. I don't know that we'll have time to, to go through all of it. But we see that the different times Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed in the early morning. He prayed at night. He prayed all night long. Uh, he prayed with groups of people, and he prayed by himself. He prayed with just a few people. He prayed in the temple with lots of people. Uh, he was our and remains as our model of prayer because even now he's seated at the right hand of the Father ever interceding for us. And so we look to him as our model, as our example if Jesus prayed like this, we need to pray like that. Mm -hmm. If he didn't pray like that, then it's probably not wise for us. We don't want to be over, overly unnecessarily, quote, spiritual. Yeah. Uh, because if we do, we'll be like the Corinthians who prided themselves on spirituality. And Paul writes them and says, you're not spiritual at all. The truth is we look at Jesus, we follow his example, we see his obedience in prayer, and we want to follow that. And so... Um Sometimes somebody will say, well, I don't know how to pray. So what will you say to somebody that says, I don't know how to pray? 
I think, I think that's legitimate because while one side conversation is common to mankind, we know about conversation. There's some people, number one, who are not very good conversationalists. I've met people who are just human to human are not good conversationalists. But number two, because of some of the misunderstandings about prayer, because they think it's formal. They, they maybe uh, went to a church where, where, where the prayer times were more formal. Maybe prayers were read or whatever. I think it's a legitimate question. I don't know how to pray. And that's why you know that I, I have taught here at New Life Church, as well as many other places. I most often personally use uh, the Lord's Prayer as my model of prayer when Jesus said, pray like this, I don't think he necessarily meant to just say those words over and over again mm-hmm. or just that to be all that I pray. But for me, that's a model of prayer. I look at it and, and there are divisions in that prayer of time that we won't talk about now, but there are divisions in that that help us. And so I think that's a really amazing thing. And I just say to you that if you don't know how to pray, number one, uh, prayer is conversational. Just as conversation with the Heavenly Father. Mm-hmm. Talk to him. You can be transparent. Tell him what's on your heart. Read the Psalms. Uh, but there, uh, there are ways, there are um, things that we can teach you and help you, and you can reach out to us at New Life Church, and we can give you some resources to help you in your prayer life, uh, because prayer is so vital and important, and I really do believe that we learn to pray. Um, what I pray now, and thank you for your kind words about me being a man of prayer, I, I'd like to think I am. I'm sometimes afraid that I'm not as much as I should be. Um, but uh, I want to be a man of prayer. Right. And wherever I'm at now, at whatever thing uh, in the Scripture comes to mind, if you're given much, you're required of much. And so I'll probably be required much more than some other people. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, as, as you practice praying, as you spend time in prayer, it becomes more and more... Uh, a part of who you are. so that, And that's really what we want here at New Life Church. Amen. We want people to understand Amen. that prayer is what? Who we are, who we are and, and what, what we, we do. do. It's not just what we do. If it's, if it's just what we do, then I'm not sure that that's a value. But prayer has to be who we are and what we do. It's our relationship with the Heavenly Father. It's what we do alone, and it's what we do corporately as a body. I want to just take a moment, Theo, and just thank you for these notes you, you've put together some really good notes for this week. And again, I'd like to encourage you go to the Discipleship Resource Center on our website at newlifema.com and uh, just download that. You can have it and you can go through it. And uh, there's a lot of scripture. Um, yeah. We haven't had time to talk about it. And I don't remember whether you'll be talking about that in your notes. But even uh, one, one method of prayer is not only to follow the model of the Lord's Prayer, but one method of prayer that I do some is to pray through the scripture, to open the Bible and and just find a place there. Maybe the Holy Spirit leads you or directs you to. The Psalms are obviously a good place to do it, but just to take it and to actually make those words become your prayer. And the way I do it is I'll read a verse and then I'll kind of put it into my own words. I'll I'll pray it like that. And um, the whole point is that we want prayer to be part of our, we want it to be our culture. We want it to be who we are in what we do. So Thea, I just wanted to take time to, to thank you. You put together some Lord. great notes, thank and I know the rest of this week is going to be a blessing to you, so don't miss it. If you miss it at 11 a.m., and I understand some, some of you are working, you can't see it at 11, but that's the cool thing about all this. It's there, <laughs> and it'll stay there, and it'll be on uh, available, even links on our website where you can go, and I hope every one of our D1 ministry team leaders will be watching these notes and be going through it because you're going to glean much from it. So thanks again, Theo. Thank Why don't you. you close us out in prayer? Absolutely. Father, thank you for another precious time in your presence to talk about your word and talk about the importance of prayer and to know that you admonish us to pray. You call us to pray. You call us to call upon your name and you will answer us. It, you are, we are not just calling into the air. We are calling to a father who loves us and even sent your son on earth to die for us. And he has lived our lives 
to again before so he knows how we feel about every situation in our lives so lord i pray in the name of jesus for everyone that's watching and everyone that's going yes. to watch i ask oh god in the name of jesus that your holy spirit will ignite a love of prayer that we will know that as we commune with you we'll be able to commune with others and we'll be able to live in your will and according to your will and your purposes for our lives we honor you lord and we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.